Yo. Hello, hello. Fatal Shokri Jazz. Celery. Celerites? Is it Celerites? Raggedy, what's up? Captain? My captain? How you doing? Glitchy, hello, Yoshi. Yo. Yoshiko, how's it how's it going? Martin, dude, thanks for the 35 months. Corsid, what's up? Anik, hello. Low Polly, let's go. Riggy, how you doing? Be single, what's up? Hello. I've been good. Hang on, let me... There we go. I'm good. How are you? We got eight posts in here already. Pretty cool. One more month for three years. Dude, time's crazy, right? Time is crazy. You'll be here in spirit. I believe in you. Polly sucks. Enjoy your meeting. Anik, hey, thank you. 37 months, my God. My God. Uh, I probably need to get Photoshop up. Let me just do that real quick here. And I'll start opening up your guys' work and see where we're at. Okay, boom, boom, boom. Just clicking these open real quick and then uh, we'll hop into it. How are you guys doing? I'm good, QA job interview at the studio, which make Age of Empires in the UK. Dude, sick, I'm rooting for you, man. Frank, what's up? Yo, yo. Nick, I like how you forgot to post your concept and then it's just much further down. Wait a minute, hang on. Am I reading this right? Let me... It's like, I feel like I've seen these before. And I have. I was like, weird, this is... A lot of people haven't made much progress and then I realize it's because I'm looking at the last time I did the critiques. Ah! <laughs> All right. Just clicking these open. I hope you guys are good. Let's see here. Okay. I think because okay, so we got a we got a handful right now. I'll pull these over and we'll get started. Let me make sure Photoshop is is good to go as well. Just in case we need to do any doodles, doodly doos. Man, it's my first time here, and I just got impressed by how engaged you are with the whole audience. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm I'm happy to impress you. Um, still fumbling with my scene, so my current screen does does not match the screenshot I panic captured earlier. <laughs> oh no. I gave I gave warning in the server too. Okay, let's um, let me just get rid of this white background. Oh man, you guys are just posting away. Okay, we're just gonna we're gonna jump into this. I'm gonna lower the music down. So for anyone who's new here, I usually cut the music. It's for like YouTube and stuff. I know I can clip it out and whatnot, but it actually allows you to enjoy uh, the stream while also uh, listening to your own tunes. So you can kind of set the energy that you like. Um, but yeah, that being said, let's uh, let's switch over. And if I miss if I miss anything in chat, just uh, repeat and maybe tag me the second time, and uh, I'll see if I can get get to your message. And Yoshi, I'm good, man. 
I'm good. Where uh, the background behind me is going to start getting taken down pretty quickly here as we're getting ready to move and whatnot. But um, until then. Okay, I'm going to change the music for my own tastes. And we're going to get started. All right. Oh, we need our captions. There we go. And, and my little cheeky face at the bottom corner there. Uh, cool. Let's, uh, let's jump in. Okay. So first up, Mark, dude, I appreciate you taking the time to post, post your, uh, your work. Something simple, but I wanted to showcase. I know it's not much, but it's a sign. It's a sign that you're confident enough to post your work. And that's, that's already a lot. He's got Photoshop's ready, dude, you, you know. Okay. So Let's let's talk uh, about maybe materials and just some added details that you can get just by by what you're how you're managing things here. So there's a lot of like normal information that's happening on like surface level, right? You can see with like okay, maybe I need to you know put me over here. So you've got some normal info that's conflicting with my understanding of what the surface is, right? So any types of surface detail that you're applying through normal maps, you want to make sure that those um, kind of match the surface details you see in real life. So right now, a lot of these kind of look like um, maybe concrete-esque type surfaces. Metal's actually rather smooth, uh, at least in the PBR sense of things. Um, and a lot of the surface is represented through roughness and just making sure that it's set to metallic. Um, that being said, like when you have exposed metal, like these little bullet marks and, and whatnot, you're gonna wanna make sure that those look like they're aged the same way. Like the surface has kind of got the same kind of grit or rusting that's, that's occurring. Um, the other thing too is maybe, so the poly count looks pretty okay. The inner edge here, right now it's like if I, if I do this and and we look at it from a side view, let's say that this, oh wow, let's say that that's too dark. Um, let's say that we go and draw a line like this. And let's say this is the front, this, this side, and this is side view. And then you go this way and then on the back, you're doing, you're doing this. Now this, this area here, you're gonna wanna, for a more visibly interesting surface to just, try and avoid 90 degree angles in areas like this and try and go more instead of like this, try and go more like, like this, just because you're going to get a little bit more, that might be a bit exaggerated as well, but, um, it gives you a, a edge that lighting can, can work with. And it tends to go a little bit further away from what we see when we look at geometric, uh, modeling. Right. So what you're always trying to do is go away from, things looking like they're 3D and figure out like, okay, how do I, how do I do that? One of the ways is to adjust the, the, the silhouettes that imply geometry and try and go more towards, uh, different types of shapes. Um, yeah, some other things is maybe, so I mentioned the normal stuff. I think what I would like to do is at some point post in like the critiques channel, tag me and just show me the buffers. Like, what does your roughness look like? What does your albedo, your, your normals look like? What does your um, metalness map look like? I mention normals. I don't usually mention normals, but when a normal map looks inverted to me, I kind of want to see what your normals look like. Cause this looks like it's flipped and you can, you can fix that by just flipping the green channel, but just, uh, just a detail. Um, one thing though, the things I will say that I really, really like is how you're already trying to break silhouettes and you're kind of adding story or character through the way that you've modeled stuff. And yeah, don't, don't worry about the troubles. Like just, um, we just highlight the issues and then we'll just work through how to like better them, right? So last thing I'll mention on this is, so these are stickers, right? They're quite aged. They're pretty torn away. And then you've got the uh, the graffiti paint on top of it. Thinking about the way stuff layers, like you've got this dirt type stuff. Does did the graffiti like you can get a more interesting 
convincing surface if you think about the way stuff layers and the roughness value between those layers. So maybe the paint happened after this this dirt pass. So the paint has like a different roughness from the, the dirt and the, the paint of the sign itself. The stickers could have their own roughness values, like maybe one was really shiny and one was, was more matte. Getting those values in and then when they chip away, they start to expose the roughness under them. Um, and then seeing the graffiti on top of it or the, the anarchy symbol. How do you do stickers in Painter? Ooh. With stamps, probably. Um, a lot of the times in game development, we don't do sticker, stickers on the material, just as a FYI. We'll usually make it like an alpha cutout, and then it's a tileable sticker pattern, or it's like actually modeled sticker pieces off of like an atlas of stickers, and then they're populated across the surface of objects. That way you get a higher resolution. Uh, cool. Let's uh, let's look at this next one. Martin, continue working on the scene. I'm currently working. Did you guys caught me in a good? I'm in. I got the energies right now. I don't know what's going on, but I'll, I'll take it. Maybe it's all that balanced food eating I've been doing. Um, I continue working on the scene. I'm currently working on replacing all the blockout meshes with proper assets. Ignore the tree in the foreground and the rocks that are still placeholders. Would love to hear your thoughts. If there's anything standing out scale, compositionally or lighting wise, I could improve. Hmm. Okay. Man, I love that there's a, I love this. This is freaking cool. Uh, you can't get reviews on your portfolio, but you can get review on a single piece. It doesn't have to be work in progress. So let's go here. Oh, wow. You high res dude. Uh, okay. So right now, if we just like, I don't know if you saw me squinting just now, but let's just, let's just blur this really fast. Let's are blurs, Gaussian blur, and just see where like colors are, colors are sitting. So this is great. You've got a lot of warm colors going on here, right? Which draws the focus to that specific spot. Um, the next thing I would say is you're getting information here. You probably could lean on the fact that this is warm and the whole backdrop is cold, but you could do brighter cold for elements that are up close. Or if you wanted to like push the, the emphasis of the moon, uh, here, like if the moon, if the moon's big enough, cause right now the stars feel a little strange in scale. Although I, I do like the look of it. I think it depends like the mood or the look you're going for, but think about all the stuff you could do. Um, if the moon was larger, so let's, let's, oh, let's try that really quick here. This looks crazy as well. I know. So if the moon was like this big, for example, nice two moons, shall we two moons? Okay, so by doing this, maybe we could dupe the, let me just make sure I'm doing this right. You could push the brightness that kind of comes from the illumination of the moon. I'm just gonna try and match the moon's value really quick here. And then let's just put a mask on it uh, and then invert it. And then imagine you're able to get like these these highlights around this area. I'm just gonna literally do this for a second. Don't mind me. I'm like, this is with my mouse, so uh, <laughs> you've been warned. Um, so imagine you've got some details being highlighted by a larger light source. Cause remember, no matter what outside of like what's happening here, the moon is the brightest thing in the scene outside of like these, uh, these, these lights. This of course, I assume is going to get a little bit, uh, darker and, um, you can use, even if we don't have this moon, you can use this to highlight, um, and give you some directionality. 
we do do something like that. Oh man, mouse mode. Let's go. Oop. Oh my God, come on. There we go. So doing stuff like that, man, it's gonna give you some nice extra free compositional pop. You see, just getting those elements to come out, just to bring your your closer, uh, whoop, your adding dynamics to your your background, basically. Oh, come on, bro. <laughs> so we can do this maybe. And then let's just, cause this side doesn't make too much sense to have it here. So we'll, we'll really push this back. Um, just maybe on the rooftop. So getting that really will push your, your dynamics if you want to say it like that. And it's just getting those those elements to pop out a bit. And you can put it wherever you need it, you know? Like if you wanna make sure that we kinda see the telephone poles, um, think about, so of course there's atmosphere and you're using atmosphere to separate everything, right? So you've got your layers through atmosphere and light hits an object. So like light from this moon hits this telephone pole and then bounces off of it and hits hits you in the eye right and that's how you see it i guess with the cell phone pole being darker than the sky uh less of it's hitting your eye than the brightness of the the photons coming from the sky okay and i don't know if you ever notice this when you're skiing or snowboarding but you'll see mountains off in the distance and there's there's clouds and it's kind of foggy and it's quite far away but you're still getting like crazy highlights and hot spots so like really reflective surfaces, like uh, let's say these these guys here, these are metal. Those have a higher like bounce or like ability to go through the atmosphere than the rest, the other elements. So you could do something like this and then, sorry to blind you, we can just push this down. And you get you get those details to pop out while still being pushed back. And those, those will add that extra layer, that extra level of detail that you're, that you're gonna be looking for as you start to polish and refine all of the information that's here. Um, of course, as you're going, make sure to look at all of these lines. Let's, let's give you, there we go. Look at all these lines and figure out what you can do with the snow and what you can do with these lines to try and get it to feel more lumpy. Like you're already kind of doing it here and just being able to experience or feel like you can see the clumpiness of the snow is gonna go a really, really long way, especially here up close. And anywhere you have these straight lines, you can basically make the ground look much more fluffy just by breaking this line up a lot. Like I can even, I can probably fake it a little bit here. But that, it'll go a long way. Like you'll be surprised. Anyways, yeah. Just remember all of the, the way that surfaces react to lighting and where your brightest source of light is. This is also, of course, quite bright. Man, I love this character here. Make sure he's getting like moonlit. Uh, and maybe, I mean, I like that there's the warm light here. So a little bit of warm light on the back here would be good. And then this is all like moon moonlit side. Anyways. Yeah, hope that uh, hope that helps. Also, you've got a pretty straight line here, and you've got like a flat board here. I would think about taking this and bringing it closer to the building, and then maybe like doing something in front of the building just to break up the the shapes. Maybe we've got some stuff here. 
uh, some stuff that goes under the under the tubes and whatnot. And it's okay for the tubes to get kind of covered in snow. So, anyways, those types of details, anything to like kill these these laser lines is going to be important. And careful with like um, weighting all of these like little pieces equally around the top here. I just noticed these. You should probably have them focus more towards the higher point and have them become less as they go further away. That way it really feels like, okay, on that lower side, it just kind of slides off. And I mean, maybe you can, depending on how, how long it's been like that. But yeah, cool. Pretty sick looking, uh, looking dope. I'm excited to see where this goes. And uh, don't hesitate to uh, push, push the ice in the water. Cool. Okay, next up is Sparta. I haven't even looked at what this... Ooh, bro. Let's go. Perfect time for my art station post. <laughs> Just finished it, huh? Dude, hell yeah. Hang on. I'm going to... Just put this over here. This looks uh, pretty impressive, man. Dude, what is happening? <laughs> Let me log in, art station. Looks amazing, man. Okay, if we look at the look at the composition, compositionally very strong. Ponces, what's up, dude? Compositionally extremely strong. I'm gonna post this in chat as well if you're if you haven't been around. Daheen, what's up, dude? And no problem, Martin. I hope it was helpful. Uh, so. It's quite interesting, quite interesting. This shot, so this shot to me isn't as um, interesting as this shot. Although I do like seeing the bridge. I'm trying to, this shot is stronger. So if you take this frame and this one, I would actually, I would remove this one and maybe stick with this one or, or the other one, like keep your image count down. I can appreciate all the work that you put into this though. This is great. I'm so what I'm not Daheen. Oh, you are Sparta. What? How did I not know this? Yeah. You struggle to have good image quality, especially for the video. So <laughs> Sparta, man, tricking me. So overall, this looks really good, really impressive. Um, I want to, I want to understand the impressiveness. Do you know what I mean? Like show us a few tileable materials, show us how you tackled at least one of the pieces, show us the wireframes. Of course, it's going to be high poly, but just, just so we see how you're utilizing the geometry. I love that you're showing the like the modularity. That's really good. Um, this is this is a small critique, and I don't think it's more of a personal thing. Um, so this is your uh, pure ref, but when you're showing your pure ref to people, it's important for you, them to understand what you're focusing on and what you're showing them in your pure ref. So you have the drawing references are really small. I would scale that up and just take up this whole space. Think about it like uh, reference gathering UV packing, if you will, just to so we can see, you know. Um, switch this song. So otherwise, it looks like your. I can't tell if your material AO is working or not. It looks like it might be. That's the other thing I would love to see is in a shot like this, I want to see your buffers. I want to see those buffers. I want to understand like what's going on here. Um, <clears throat> let's, uh, let's grab this frame and feedback a little bit on, on a few of the elements. Oh man, someone's got a bigger screenshot. Okay. Um, <laughs> 
So this material is so close to the camera that I would see if you can get a height map so that you can displace this just to get some silhouette, you know, just to get this shape to pop a bit. And then the roughness difference between this and this, get some, some variation in there as, as well as maybe like a gradient in the roughness. It just will add more complexity to the surface. Um, the reason I actually brought this shot in is I wanted to run my filter over it or my script. Where are you at here? Levels check, let's go. Okay, so your areas where the pixels are black are too dark for like presenting information to the viewer. I know that there's a stylistic choice sometimes to make an area really, really dark, but I feel like in this scenario where it's outside and the time of day is, is where it's at, this tells me that there's an imbalance in the albedo value of these materials. Like they're, they're likely too dark. I'm getting it here as well. Although it's not, no, they're pretty, they're pretty dark. I think it's just boosting the albedo up a bit. Cause like if we, if we do this and then can I, can I eye drop these or like select them? Yeah, contiguous. And then let's get let's get really picky about it. Five pixels. There we go. Okay. So if we turn this off, let's grab all of that, paste it, and then let's just like actually no, sorry. We're gonna put a mask. And uh that mask is gonna give us the dark areas, and then we'll just do a levels on that layer. Am I not? The active layer is empty. Madness. What? Hang on. Okay, sure. <laughs> okay. Should work now. There we go. So just pulling the value up a bit. If there's more range, you'll get you'll see more of it. But look at look at the information there. Like just getting more stuff in there. And look at how much more dynamics you get in the trees. Up here I think it's fine. Cuz like you could do this and then maybe like We just erase it in some areas and you can still use it around the, uh, around the edges, but you can see how much that, uh, changes things. You're just missing a lot of info when, uh, when that happens, that's all. How do you do that in unreal? So you can do that through your post-processing and you can take your lows and increase them or decrease them. This is why it's kind of important to keep your, when you, uh, have your, image and you're going to be doing a lot of posts work on the image is it actually make sure nothing really hits too dark and nothing hits too bright. You want to make sure that everything is just enough. Cause like you can see without, with this, you get more information in there. There's of course, there's still not enough. So there's not a lot of pixels to play around with, but yeah, feel free to add some point lights, get your ambient lighting and just boost it up a little bit. Maybe, uh, the, um, what is it called? The bounce light coming from your from your directional light. Maybe you can increase that a bit. But overall, it's it's okay. What is this mask in Photoshop to debug? This is just a gradient map. So you can get a gradient map down here, and you click gradient map, and then you can uh, you can map to to your own gradient. So like, let's say we wanted to use these colors, right? You can map that gradient and use it on top of the, uh, where are we at here? The surface. So all I'm doing is remapping all of your values in your image to this range. 
and I just built this myself. So I'm basically saying if it's this dark, it's too dark. And if it's too bright, it's, it's becomes blue. So you're doing a pretty good job of balancing your blues or your, your two bright pixels. Um, what we could do is do that. I'll dupe this and then we'll go in levels and I'll show you like, as you turn this up, getting a little bit of blue is kind of okay. And you'll see like with this off, you're getting more range. So your hot spots are gonna be even that much, a bit more brighter. These also are weirdly bright. These are brighter than the, like when you turn this on, if you think about value, these, these lights down here, these like candles are brighter than anything in the sky. They're brighter than what the windows are reflecting. So. Th so think, think about those aspects as well. Um, but yeah, I hope that was helpful. There's a, there's a lot you can do here to just like push it just a little bit. Cool. Oh God, blind. Um, let's see what's next. I also just last thing I want to see your materials, man. <laughs> I want to see, like, if anything, you don't have to show your materials. Just show the buffers of this shot. But this is really sick. It's a very impressive scene. Really, really nice. Okay. Dude, am I getting that pop-up on every one of the... No, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Whoa, you actually, you look like someone I work with. That's crazy. Um, Sparta, no problem, man. Or... Dahin, Dahin, no problem. Yoshi, oh, this is you? Crazy, crazy. Well, this looks cool. Um, let's, nice, we got a wireframe. I'm digging it. I would say exaggerating these a little bit more would be, would be nice. Sword looks cool for sure. You probably don't need these. Are you doing like a subtle bend to this? Is that why those are there? If that's the case, I'll I'll accept it. <laughs> I'll accept it. Um, oh, dude, this is a dope angle because you get like really nice close-ups of the materials. I would, so you've got spots that come up. I would even take a few spots and go in. That way it just feels really organic, right? It feels like it's wrapped. Um, oh, dude, this is cool. Okay, so you got some maps in here. That's good. Um, with the packed with the packed texture, what I would actually do is you could put, like, your albedo and your normal stacked here, and then you could put, like, the pack mapped here and then unpack it for us here. That way we can see how you're thinking about your layers. Like you get bonus points when, when your roughness is in the green channel. If you know, you know. And so th these are like those, those details that are really important to just kind of get a little bit more insight into your understanding of PBR and how you're utilizing your pack maps, how your, how your textures are reading and whatnot. But surface wise, th this looks pretty nice. I mean, it's, it's really nice. I'm curious of the, okay, vertices, tries. So we normally don't look at vertices and tries as much as like looking at uh, your wireframe. And it's a one, one texture set and the maps are 4K. If you could get this to look like this with 512 maps, you, you've, you've like got it locked in. Cause like resolution wise, like it's going to require some techniques with like detail normals to get the, the extra noise in there. And like this surface information for me personally feels maybe a little too strong. And if you were able to say that that's a tileable normal and then control the strength of it, now you have control over like the, the overall strength of that, it's, um, of that surface noise. 
and that allows you to have more flexibility with adapting to feedback and, and whatnot. Overall though, pretty sick. I would love to see this shot like side by side with just like this th in the middle, a rough roughness on the right and maybe like a albedo on the, on the left, just so you can see like, okay, this is what it looks like as you split it up and we can look at the maps and just see how, how you're using your PBR. Can I put mine in 10 minutes? If there's room, we got an hour and 20 minutes. We got some time. We got some time. We only do real time here. No rendering. <laughs> uh, hopefully that was helpful. Keep, uh, we'll keep trucking along here. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. This is looking pretty good, man. Let me just copy this. Do we have another? Oh, ho. Oh, ho. What's, uh, what's going on here? Hang on here. First ever submit. Oh, yeah. I'm going to give you community as well. Let's go. Okay. So hello, Jer. I'd love to quickly ask what you think about lighting. Darker one being the old one uh, or any pointers about it if it's actually better than the old one. <laughs> also, Moss got brighter too. I'll just make sure I can... Oh yeah, high res. Oh my God, they're different resolutions. How is that possible? I thought this was real time. Fatal. Uh, okay, so Explain yourself. <laughs> so I like the brighter one, and I think mainly it's because there's some cooler colors in here. So this, yeah. Let's just look over here. Will we? So the, the brighter one is nice. Make sure that your... Um, your mid to dark range is is retained a little bit just for like these like shadowed areas because like as you switch to this one you can see you're losing a little bit of your depth here in the shadow um so you're losing a little bit of the separation of the elements the moss i would say became more saturated i would say the moss became more stylized Hmm. So I think I like your old moss better. Now lighting direction wise, I think it works better for, for your uh, hero prop in the middle here. It's really nice with the gold elements added there. Um, one thing you'll notice too is like, because this got darker, or the, the original is a bit darker. So you had a problem that in the shadows, darker moss is very dark. Okay, so... Okay. That means... That means we should be looking at your albedo and your brightness levels of your albedos. Because, like, for example, the one thing I wanted to highlight was... You see this dirt down here? You see how dark it is? Presumably, this is all coming from the erosion of everything around it, right? So the stones and all that stuff, they break down. They, they kind of turn into dirt and, and rocks and pebbles and sand forms from that eventually. And then plants and stuff grow from it, right? So there, there isn't really a reason why this should be um, darker than this. 
right? Like if we, I wonder if I can, come on AI, I'm gonna rely on you. I believe in you AI. Yeah. So if we take this, so you can see, of course, it's it's getting a little weird. Um, let's let's see what we can do about it. It did get warmer because we're moving those values around, which is what I'm going to be talking about with the moss here in a second. It's like you, it's a, a very, very fine balance. So just getting those elements to split themselves up a little bit from the, I feel like these, we're losing the, the color of the highlights in this. But it just, it's balancing it to try and bring it into the scene and make it look like it's part of the same content. Um, what you did with the moss is you brightened it and you can see, like, if we go, let's go into the shadow here. So this is the shadow. Um, and in the shadow, I can see it is it is darker. But it, it doesn't look that dark to me. Let me see if I can find it in another spot here. Like, these are, this whole area is in shadow. Well, it's not now. <laughs> Generally, I like you're seeing more information. Just make sure you're not losing your shapes. Um, is there an area where I can really see the, okay, I guess down here, the moss is, is darker. The thing is, is like, the color of this moss, like if we control Y, and then I turn this on and off. It's not that much brighter, right? It's not that much brighter. Let's, if I, let's eye drop this and just look at like, um, where are we at here? Just look at value. So if we look at through the, like, B through the, the, the brightness we're sitting around here um, and then if we switch to to this one I mean I'm trying to <laughs> trying to navigate this actually here's what we'll do I'll eye drop this I'll paint it here and then we'll switch to the other one and I'll eye drop it That's in direct light, right? So let's go into like this area shadowed. And this isn't a precise science what I'm doing right now. But I can see in your shadows it did get brighter, right? Direct light, the value did not change all that much. But if we turn this off and you see, look at the color differences between the like, what is this one? So this is your, your previous one. So it's more, I don't know, how do you describe it? Because in this one, dude, this one's like oversaturated in my opinion. Like it feels like the saturation is super high. Oh, we can see it up here. So you see your saturation is around 70. Oh God, you guys blind yet? feels more saturated, which is really weird. Yeah, just by a little bit, like six or 7%. If you were to take that moss, come on, let me select it, please. Bro. Ugh. Okay, so if we, if we take that moss, and just push the saturation back down. It feels more realistic without really, um, without losing the brightness that you wanted, you know? It could be the lighting as well as kind of injecting a little bit cooler colors into it. 
So maybe you could like adjust the 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 brightness of the or the the temperature of your lighting. should undo the saturation. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't think the saturation would, would go up at all. Um, but the other thing I was going to say, the reason I like this one, I think, is because of the temperature difference. But I think that temperature difference should actually be in your shadows, and the main light should still be warm. Do you know what I mean? So if we took, like, so this one is the, the cool one. So your ambient lighting is more cool. Wait, am I doing this right? Hang on. Oh, this one's cool. Okay. So your ambient lighting is is cool, but your shadows or your direct light is still warm. It's like, am I doing this right? Yes, yes, I am. Okay, cool. Madness. But I think you know what I'm trying to say. Overall, this is looking really nice. There's some there's some weirdness up here. I think just like getting getting this detail up there would be really good. Um, this type of of information would be dope. Just because then you, you get free, it's like free uh, silhouette breakup. But yeah, your shadows should should have some, some temperature to them. That's that's inverse of like your direct your direct light. This is probably a bit heavy. Let me let me just kind of scale this back. Because you want to understand what's what's up there. So that way you can understand like, oh, okay, it's hanging off of the thing. And the other thing is like, because of how I'm doing this, you could probably, maybe we can put a drop shadow behind it or let's, let's paint it. Let's get crazy. Yeah. Let's, let's do something ridiculous. Um, let's just like, we'll steal from this value. So if you were to push this down, maybe make it a multiply. Maybe not a multiply. Darken? You can fake the the kind of behind the the shapes, getting some shadows back there. And that that'll help with like all that depth you're trying to get up there, you know? We'll I'll just erase this one. It just gets that layering. Mm. Mm. Now, the other thing that's happening right now that you might want to play with, uh, and then I'll move on to the, the next pieces, um, is this line here. This line is your light, your shadow, you know? That's your shadow edge. It's soft. That's your shadow edge. I would take... You see what's happening here? This is really cool. You're getting this like nice dappled shadows from like leaves and whatnot. Place a tree way out here, up above, just to get you some like canopy breakup along this edge, maybe along this edge, just to, you know, break up those edges and make it much more like organic feeling. Doesn't have to be much either. It could. It could also be strategically placed to help like points here. But yeah, that'll do that'll do a lot, man. If you want, this is kind of interesting. If you want, you can take um, a screenshot like this and then you can change the the direction of the directional light so it's not casting in here. Take another screenshot and then just paint paint away the uh the shadows like have this view and then mask out and remove and see see if you can find some type of interesting composition that'll help get you away from these these straighter like cleaner lines in your shadows 
Oh my god, every time. Anyways, super cool. Very nice progress. The middle stone pieces reminds you of an Oreo. Nice shark. Nice. I see it. I see the Oreo. Ancient Oreo. Not double stuffed, but definitely there. All right, Jazz. It's it's uh it's your turn. So you're in the middle of blocking out. Ooh boy. Ooh boy, has Sarah seen this? So block out progress on my new scene. Not much yet, but interested in hearing potential early feedback about light and composition. Anything really. Um Hmm. So I've never been a um, I've never been a fan of the sun in your eyes, and the shadows coming towards you. Like I can see you moving it around to see what what would look good. Keep in mind there will be elephants on fountain. What? Greenhouse, let's go. Um, so you've blocked out a lot of the props and the foliage that you think you're going to need. I would block out everything else, um, and fill your scene with it. I'm sure fatal is tired of hearing me say that block out everything, everything. Where's the watering cans? Where do you put like, where, where's like the compost? go where's the is there any overgrowth that you want to have like growing up the side of stuff block it all out containers is there like shelving that's on the side that just kind of stores like all the extra soil and where where does this person that maintains this space where do they where do they take their pots to swap soil and like reroot and repot their plants where's the hose man Where's the hose? <laughs> little little puddles, stuff like that. Can be super block out. Very, very basic. But block it all out. The servants go do the dirty work somewhere. Somewhere else. Get out of here. <laughs> This is a place for fancy ladies to read their fancy books. Then if it's maintained that much, I guess I need references and I see you have some. This shot is really cool. I actually like this angle much more. See, the shadows are going this way, so you're getting these long lines that are cutting the space. Um, think about where your shadows are at and where they make your eyes go. This is this is cool with like the color hits from like the. Oh, what what are those? I'm like, what are those? I don't recognize the fruit yet, of course, because it's is it a fruit? Are they flowers? I don't know. I'm, I'm going to guess flowers, red kiwi, <laughs> but, uh, oh boy, these look very familiar. Mm hmm. I see where your inspiration is coming from now. Okay. So I assume it's going to be a lot of tile work. This is a very cool project. They will be flowers. Super cool. Okay. I see where you're going. Um, so I guess the teapots go here and I think a lot of your work is going to be in how you decorate the floor with those clean tiles. This angle is much stronger though. I would go with this and there's your teapots. Oh my God. Get out. Hang on. Yeah. This compositionally really interesting. I love that this goes up. I think that like. Having, see this shorter plant, putting that one here maybe 
or taking this one, making it a little bit shorter to put here and then doing something similar of this here and making it go higher because of course they're going to take all the really large plants and kind of put them in the, in the main like view where the, where like the fountain is and all that stuff and just kind of build up this large like centerpiece of, of foliage. Right. So this is okay to have here. And I like this plant as well. I really like this plant. This one's super cool. Um, getting a, a really tall one there and maybe allowing us to see it a little bit more, like taking this one and pointing it more this way, allows this to open up a bit, which gives you the opportunity to show the taller plants. 74th beer or coffee. So when you subscribe, just so, so you guys know, <laughs> Twitch takes half of it. So if beers in Sweden were, were $2 and 50 cents, I, that'd be bad. That'd be a bad thing. I'd be sad because, uh, <laughs> I'd always want to have beer. Um, but yeah, Twitch loves to take a cut. Let's, let's say it like that. <laughs> beer math. <laughs> Um, no, a beer here would, um, require a single beer would require, oh my God, hang on. I, I need to know this now because it's kind of funny. Okay. So if we get a $5 sub and then it gets divided by two, it's two fifty. A beer here averages 70 crowns, 70 times 10, no, $10 is 100, 100 crowns roughly. So that would be, oh, this is hurting my brain. Dude, we don't tip here. There's no tipping here because they get paid enough. Um, Dude, it hurts. It hurts. Anyways, if if uh, if I got if I got ten dollars, which means I would need two, four four subs, three three month subs for one beer, <laughs> something like that. Anywho, I digress and have attempted to do math on stream, which they say is one of the cardinal like sins. Um, cool. Do this, do this scene. And I think, I think the focus of this scene is actually this table. I feel like everything should feel like it's, it's kind of framing this and pointing towards this. It's kind of why I want you to rotate this plant. Like if I just, delete. No. <laughs> oh, what am I doing? Often you're gonna wanna like delete or erase stuff. And it's better to actually mask it out and then paint back because you'll end up doing less to get the same result. And if it's a mask, you can always, you can always bring it back, you know? Oh. Yeah, see, and then you get this like, compositionally, you'll get this thing. Uh, where are we at here? You'll get this. And then all these lines can be leading. You could probably take, take this whole area and, and bring it in a bit more, or you can make it a really wide shot and just give more room here and show that stairwell going up. I didn't even notice that stairwell before. Okay, cool. Coolio, LL Coolio.
This is pretty rad. I expect the glass to get a little dirty and like maybe some foliage on the outside kind of going up. You know, it's just, it needs to feel cozy. It needs to feel like this space that's just kind of meh, meh. I think you've got, you're on the right track. Man, I went up one of these over uh, around my birthday. It was kind of crazy. No, not meh, meh. I think there's an R in there at the end. Meh. Okay, onward. Yo, check this out. Dude, this looks much better. This looks much better. So the, the backdrop, of course, it looks like you're still, maybe you're not focusing on it yet. Um, the backdrop's gonna be important, but what you can probably do is really like force the camera to, to soften the, the backdrop. Um, let's, let's do that, shall we? And then we can look at what, what I feel about the, the rocks in the water. Mm -mm -mm. Where are we at? Neural filters? Is that, is that what we want? I think that's what we want. Let's hope this doesn't kill the stream. We gotta, we don't want to No, We need, we need the depth depth blur let's go process on device okay so focus we want on this person boop okay focus range so this is gonna be kind of weird because I'm going to say okay to this. And of course it's blurring here. So I'm going to paste this as well on top. And we're going to just erase the backdrop here. This is probably too strong, but I would really focus on making this backdrop very, very subtle. Um, and then I, I like that this is all kind of coming in. What I was going to say about the water is right now it's really soft where, ooh, this is nice, loving this. This is great. Um, so where the rock meets the water is quite soft. And you want, you want that edge to be a bit sharper, uh, but you also want the foam and the kind of interaction between the surfaces. The other thing you're gonna want is for these rocks to have a wetness to them. Um, how would I go about showing you this? When a surface becomes wet based on its porosity, it will become darker in value and higher in saturation. So what we will do is we will lower the value. Well, probably shouldn't do it that way. We will lower the value. Maybe this way. <laughs> this paint is not going to help me. Um, yeah, so let's... Let's make that darker. And then we increase the saturation a bit. And then uh, we'll put a mask on here and I'll invert that mask. And what we'll do is we'll actually, oh no, we'll, we'll just select this edge. Okay. And you want that, that wetness along the rock you're kind of getting it, or that feeling here. I'm like, what am I doing? I'm painting. So getting that that difference is gonna be substantial. It's gonna do a lot for you. Like maybe I'll exaggerate it even a little bit. And that'll help connect the interaction between the water and the uh, in the rocks, we have wet decals. Uh, so what I would probably do is use um, what is it called? What's the volumetric tool in Unreal? 
it's like a voxelized representation of the assets that you have and it's used someone's going to say it in chat i can feel it you have height based water level on the material mesh distance fields thank you jamie yeah so you could use mesh distance fields to figure out where it the water meets the rock in the rock shader and then use that as a mask for making a, a wet uh like a wetness mask and then you can use that same distance field to get the the kind of like water interaction around the edge because because you need this you need this going on we need to feel like the the rocks are are being affected or the water is being affected by the rocks and the and the tubing you know like this is going to be that's going to be super important cuz like we can <laughs> we can try and make this look good but it, i i can't do this um <laughs> But I think you know what I'm I think you know what I'm saying. Yeah, mesh distance fields would do it for you. Cuz you can use those to generate generate a mask. Eh, kind of helping. There we go. But you want that interaction. You want all the the way that the surfaces are interacting. Rig, dude, nice. Let's go. Let's go. So this is working pretty well, I would say, what you're doing. It's just trying to figure out how to push it. The rocks out here feel dark, I guess, because they're in shadow. But they feel much darker than here. And like getting the like getting that, that darkness in the crevices in here is gonna be really helpful, I think. Cause see what now we can like Maybe I can erase this and this top here. But yeah, it gives you that gives you that depth that you're I feel like is missing. It's like a wetness dampness that occurs. And out here you have a lot of like so the the reference that you're going with, the color of that is very like saturated by comparison. Like it's not really in the palette uh, of the artist that you're that you're building from, you know. Can I just like? Because remember, he he desaturates everything's very like desaturated. So like even the. Well, it's almost like instead of doing that, I need to pull more of the blue out. Something closer to that. And that that might get you closer to, to what you're doing. The other thing I want to say is if we just let's pretend this is all good to go, minus the what I painted. Let's just get rid of that. Um, What is happening? Is it this one? There we go. Okay, I'm just going to copy and paste this. That way it's all like flattened out. So we have everything accepted already. So when you look at your ranges, there's not a whole lot. Um, there's a lot over here and not a whole lot in the bright range. And I know that's kind of how the the artist is kind of set up. It's very mid mid-ranged. There's not a lot of highs in, in that work just because everything's overcasted, right? So you can stick to that, but it definitely needs to be brighter. And it's just like all this color matching to try and get it to, to feel right. You'll see as well that this blue is extremely, maybe, maybe dark. It's maybe too dark. I like what you've done with it now though like the the type of damage that's on there is not like overly intense and the way that the everything's kind of reading is is definitely reading better together um 
it's interesting that your reflections are so dark by comparison of the materials. I'm not sure why that's happening. So this is the ocean body water and it's unuser friendly. <laughs> yeah, I would be curious to see like what's going on with the the reflections being as dark as they are. I mean everything feels a little dark even though like I was actually surprised by the levels here. Maybe it's because of the water. I was expecting this to be even more to the left. But I think the water is helping balance out by giving you more gradient. But like these characters are very dark. Hmm. I think I need to it's going to require a little bit a little bit more. Let me Didn't you post the reference? Oh, you posted the reference before. There we go. Okay, hang on here. So you can see how like even the lowest value is like is this color. So you want your lowest value to be closer to that. I wonder how you Like if you start washing this out, oh man. Like you'd have to do this with curves probably. You really suck with the water and then you're losing your mind. <laughs> Dude, I feel you. Water's not a, an easy thing. But make sure to match these these values, like you can see the sun that you have setting right now is very um, warm or like more red. Like if we just like, let's erase that. So if you, if we look at these rocks here, let me see, let me just make sure I'm doing this right. Um, we go to filter and then just go to like the camera raw filter. Let's see if we can adjust the, yeah, that's me messing with the sky Atmo to get closer to the concept. I'm like, what is, what is happening? Why, why can't I preview this? Cause it's almost like tinted more. Oh man, that's difficult because I can't see it in here. Isn't there a preview? I don't understand. That's weird. I mean, it's a little bit closer, but like it's the color of the sky and just the values that are coming through. It's really like, it's getting these shadows to all be, and the reflections to just be brighter. It's, I'm like stuck for words on it. So it's, it's killing me a little bit. Um, but I think you know what I'm talking about. The progress is definitely there. Yeah, this is this is a tough one. Let's uh let's come back to this one. We have a ton to go through. I think I need to close the close the the feedback coming in. Okay, well, I'm not going to close it, but if I don't get to you, I'm sorry. Um but yeah, 
It's it's getting there. Man, that is interesting. I'd probably when I see when I see in the concept uh this little one, you have some thick cables, but there's some really small ones there. Yeah, you have a small one there. There's a small one too. The cables, your cables have a lot of colors. At least these ones do. That's kind of cool looking. I don't see much colors in this one. Dude, this is difficult to pull off. Okay. I'm just staring at it and trying to figure out what the heck. That's a, you're, that's a tough scene, man. Yeah, definitely uh, tag me once you need more uh, critique on it. All right, time. Refinement on shape called IBM Pip Boy. Oh, that's cool. So the shapes, oh, dude, the the floppy. Or is that a zip drive? Kind of looks like a zip drive. Um, shape language wise, this feels. pretty good feels pretty good uh i'd give a little bit of sag to this surface just in the mid point here just have it dip a little bit so that way it feels a little flimsy or a little like softer um these hello mario these shapes are pretty good i think you're at the phase where you need to start adding like your larger bevels so that way it reads nicely um if that makes sense because it's like it's really sharp edged right now all the design is there we just need you to like start making it easier to read from a distance like if you can i would i would get a hand on there and just actually like put it on an arm you know even if it's just like the characters from uh, the block out of uh... no, you should be able to find a pretty good like scanned arm to just like put in there and just have the hand sticking through it so that you can see and feel the scale next to an arm. I think that's going to be extremely important. And like right now, the, the screen itself feels quite flat. I think with bevels and like getting the light to wrap around the edges, like what's happening here is gonna help us understand uh, the depth and the scale. Because I think once you put this on an arm, you're gonna realize it's extremely small. Because that needs to fit. Yeah, this is smaller than, like this screen smaller than an iPad. These keys, you're gonna be like fat finger typing for days. You can feel it. It's interesting because I, I kind of feel like if IBM were to actually do something like this, they probably would have gone with a ergonomic key layout for one-handed um, typing where it's like curved keys or like rounded keys. It's looking cool though. This is an opportunity to have like not a flat surface like this this area here probably needs to come forward or go in forward probably makes more sense and then this is like it just it design wise it's so strange that it's it's flat like that oh you need out Madu? hang on Mato got trapped in here. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it's more design details and like what can show out here on the surface when it is shut, I think would still be important. But as it stands right now, if you weren't to, if you were to not change any of the design, 
I would say that you still need to get those bevels like really wide and the, the shape language will read there for you. Like the bevels down here are quite nice. Get everything into that territory. And I think the whole thing will just read uh, more unified and not like blocked out. The design is there though. And this flat surface I would, I would sort out. Cassette tape too. Is that cassette? Bro. Little speaker action going on. Look for any opportunities to make areas change silhouette. Like this side here going in like this and, and down. That's super nice. Just going in that way. Like if, like if this, if we go to back to this side view, if this was um, a little bit shorter, then this would come down. And then when it's shut, you would get a difference of height between these two. Maybe that's, oh, I see your design is kind of following the, don't do that. <laughs> I see the, the form, the form factor going on there. Um, hmm. I don't have much else to say on it. Looks cool though. Just bevels, bevels, get those fat bevels on there. That trackball, dude. Think about how you'd use that trackball. Would the buttons be below it? I think the buttons would even be lower or the trackball would be higher. Like they're like further away from each other. I don't know, get a, get a hand in there. I'm telling you, you will be super weirded out by the scale. Uh, okay, let's, uh, let's jump to Shiro. So Shiro, I did my block out and added some starter materials. It should be a deco art inspired hallway with an elevator. Super cool. Yeah, this is going to be awesome. I can already feel the, the like deco, the art deco design with these kind of elements. These surfaces can be really hard to sell just because of how high contrast they can become. Definitely get your references in because they're going to help you um, kind of unify it all. Think about like how the floor is supposed to be detailed as well and what what is in this hallway. And I hope you have a ton of references of Art Deco because there's, there's some pretty like large shape language that you can be bringing in instead of like right now everything's quite small. If this was like huge curved wall pieces, let me see if I can. <clears throat> I'm going to try and see if I can find some, some images of something that resembles what I'm imagining in my mind. <coughs> Cause these like this hard angle information here, you don't see much of that in Art Deco, do you? It's usually rounded elements. <coughs> yeah, like this type of stuff. You get some spiky bits here. Maybe you put those spiky bits here, but it's an element that's elevated not just cut out like it's a extruded and a lot of surfaces when they get broken up like these having like a really thin metal edge going all the way down connects everything together the fisher building ah That was a crazy building. I'll post this in chat. Has a shining vibe. Yeah, it's, it's going to take some like figuring out the shapes that you want, the shape language. The focus is definitely the elevator for the shot. 
So I think this line here is probably the biggest thing that bugs me. And just, I mean, these are making everything really boxy. I think going more rounded here or round like half circle that finishes on this side would do a lot because then you can play with shape language more. Getting this out of the way and just creating something that kind of leads you to the elevator, I think would be key. And some type of like gold laced pattern that is in like embedded in the ground that like extrudes from the elevator and heads towards the camera. That's everything points to the elevator. That's going to be your, your Magnus open, if you will. Oh, you got a link too. Let me see here. What is it? Magnum Magnus opus. Is it Magnus opus? Is that how you say that? Oh, that's cool. Yeah, this is, so you can see like the depth difference of these is very shallow. So those aren't gonna, magnum opus. Thanks guys. <laughs> so these, these happen at very shallow amounts. So they're not really deep. Um, and this, this line, I would say the reason that line works is because it's really high. I think if you want to go for this look, you should immediately take this line and raise it like a couple meters. Get that height in there. Because, yeah, what you're looking at is this, which is like the front facade to elevators. But what you're needing to solve is a hallway leading to an elevator. Arguably, if you go by this design, this elevator should probably be flatter and there should be more than one elevator. And maybe it's like a lobby or like you're, you're being presented with a bunch of elevators and definitely get a human in here. We need some scale, scale reference. So it's cool though. I'm liking where this is, uh, where this is going. I don't have too much feedback on it yet. I would be really careful to put, that would be my feedback is be really careful to put materials on anything right now, just explore what's gold and what's dark and light and work on all of the shape language for the space. You can get materials on there later for sure. Pretty cool though. Pretty cool. All right. What's, what's this, what's this piece? This is looking cool. Nice. Somehow I grouped these. Gorgeous lighting. Yeah, it's quite natural feeling. So hi, do you have advice on improving visual quality and best workflow tips for upper steel beam concrete structure. I love how you took my requesting feedback to be really specific and just that's extremely specific. <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, any insights about any other parts of the scene that you think need improving? Um, I mean, it looks cool. looks really cool. I think it's going to be scale. Scale on things is, is where you're, where you're going to get like the most bang for your buck when it comes to like trying to get this to feel, uh, accurate. So knowing how high someone can tag graffiti is going to be important. I'm assuming a person's about this high somewhere around here on average. I would also say like, if you see the bottle here, man, the lighting on this is really cool. I, I actually, okay, hang on. Your lighting is on point. Don't worry about your lighting anymore. Now, when I talk about scale, also don't forget that people use different types of garbage bags. Get some like slightly different, like dirtier ones or like a different colored plastic. It doesn't have to be extreme, just like a lighter gray or like a kind of dark, 
like a blue like this, but darker. Use pink ones. <laughs> I mean, you could you could put like a really small like pink tied bag, like really small ones. You know, it's like the little trash bag that you use in the bathroom. It's like biodegradable and all that. So uh, when I look at this, you're talking about this upper area, and it made me notice the scale of things. So if a person, let's, I don't know how big a person is. I'm going to assume they're about this tall. Standing next to this. Okay, hang on. We're going to, we're bringing it in. We're bringing it in. Okay. So if a person, let's say, is that tall, um, they walk up to the camera. That bottle looks okay, scale-wise. So when we look at these bottles and then we look at these cables, these cables look huge, right? And the pole that they're attached to looks smaller than you would expect. And it's tilted for some reason. I think... If the pole wasn't tilted, is it tilted? I think it is tilted. If the pole was more straight up and thicker, these details would feel a little bit more realistic and I would maybe shrink the cable thickness a little bit. Now, continuing on scale, taking these types of details and like it kind of looks like this is the height of a person here. If I had to guess. Could be wrong. But getting these to be larger, I think will help a lot with scale. And where these meet, figuring out like how they ground. Like Jamie's been through this. Figuring out how all of this stuff connects. A pallet is about four feet. Most of the walls are about three meters. So the person's a bit taller, I think. Really? You think they're maybe like here? Something like that? Mesh decal, all the things. <laughs> maybe even a bit taller? No. This area feels... Okay. Anyways, I would get characters in here just so that you can understand the scale of everything and make sure everything's good to go. Um, okay, I'm gonna highlight, I'm just gonna like throw off a few things I see. So the bags feel a little uh, tight. They need to look a little bit more relaxed, um, a little bit more weight in their base that they're grounded, you know? Then for uh, these details, I was saying I would make these maybe a little bit thicker, a little bit wider, find out the the scale of an I beam like this, this to me, that would freak me out. If I saw this, I was going under a bridge and that lined up like that. That would terrify me. There's, there's definitely like a bracket thing that they build for like connecting all these beams together. <laughs> and then they, you know, they bolt them all. Um, so there's those details. The other thing I would say is maybe instead of like, so let's say this is your tile of this pattern, I would probably make it this big, you know, something like this scale wise. Oh man, me and my, what is happening? So making those details larger is gonna help with the scale. Again, these cables here, huge. These look huge and they're going into the concrete. So figuring out what, like how, how this connects to the system is gonna be important and figuring out the scale. Like if you can shrink these down, it's gonna make everything feel larger. Man, this is, this is looking cool though. Some nice details here. Watch out for floating. I feel like these are floating. And this is clipping. Uh, clippage. Um, I would try and lower the graffiti to a little bit more of like a localized average height of people working on graffiti.
vertical beams having all the exact same texture is noticeable. Oh, yeah, I would say like the amount of rust that's on here, I would probably uh, try and minimize it to like only a few spots. I think that'll go a long ways. I love this. This is really cool. It's so like natural and like how weird it is. <laughs> that shape is dope. Um, yeah, I think it's about making your large elements larger and then these elements that are more familiar, smaller, and it'll help with the scale understanding. Also watch out for this laser line later when you get to it. This feels pretty rad though. And like lighting wise, I actually like the orangish bins. Maybe you could, uh, maybe these ones can be general waste. And then the other one can be like one of these can be orange and it's like recycling or something. That way it's not all the same container. Cause you know, usually you gotta separate out your elements like that. The only other thing I was going to say is maybe you can like throw some decals on the ground that kind of give directionality for like traveled path. Like maybe it's just a little bit lighter here because of all the, all the walking that happens, you know, constant back and forth, constant, constant back and forth. I don't know. These feel pretty good to me. You can see the, the texture's worse on the orange. Eh, I, don't, I don't see it. I think it's fine. Looks fine to me. This is cool, though. I, I'm curious where you're taking this. It looks like it's almost done. But, yeah. Okay, I'm going to keep going. Uh, Nikhil, let me, let me see here. First time here. Pretty excited to get some feedback on recent two works. Ignore the bells on the first artwork. So I can look at one. I don't know if you're in the stream. Is it Nikhil? Oh, you're captain. You're my captain. Let's, uh, so I can look at one of these. Which one would it, would you like it to be? Philip S. It says Macavision next to you. Is that a company? CZ Bren. All right, let's go. CZ Bren, game ready model. Hey, that's me. Hello. Oh, that's kind of cool. I like that. I don't know if it's good for your first image that you're showing. And I don't know if this is good because it's so close. These are very close up shots. Dude, look at that trigger. Bro. Oh my God. Where is DEF CON? Dude, this is kind of crazy. I love the directionality info that you're throwing on here. It shows like the differences in like how the surface is are connected like oh this is obviously machined the same way this is but then it was turned sideways when it was welded on oh interesting philip so this is pretty cool um presentation wise i would probably have Like these look great. I need to see, dang, this is crazy. So there's a lot of scrolling going on here. These all look really nice though. These are all really, really nice renders. I think 
I think the scrolling might be okay. Your first image though, that it shouldn't be this because like there's so much more going on and you have so many close-ups. Like I want this angle further back. Like I want to see the gun super high res render at this angle with that light direction. This is really nice though. Um, I'm also not a weapons artist, so I can't really comment on like, like how sharp stuff is, if that makes sense. But you're getting some really nice like material differences between between things while still keeping everything quite unified. Dude, this is nice. What is, is that like a little bit of goldish stuff going on there? What is that? Man, look at this like micro wear. So much detailed colors in those grays. It it's crazy, right? This directionality of, of stuff is is really nice. And like where you're putting the dust and the control that you have with your surface is really, really good. Now, this material, you're not really showing this material much. And with all of this textural information, I guess I wish there were some areas that were smoother. Just for like this area. Of course that's gonna be smooth, right? I put close shots for the details that I worked on. Whoa, wait, so there's like multiple people working on this weapon? Is that what you're saying? Man, this looks sick. Like this, at least this should be your first image. This one, you can start to feel that it's, it's, it's a bit gamey. But yeah, it does say that this is game ready model two sheets 4k each pretty high res textures but maybe for a first person shooter this can be okay i think it depends uh, but of course if it was for you know posted with permission it looks good it looks really nice um oh man i love this i don't have anything to comment on actually it's kind of, it's a complex one. It's funny that the trigger is so blue. I love this shot. Presentation's really nice. The comet is, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is... It's interesting because, like, I I feel like I need to see one of these guns in person in order to really understand how sharp stuff is. Because my, my gut reaction is, like, things are too sharp. But they're all so machined, you know what I mean? Like, it's... Like, this is the imperfections on something that's built like this. So... Dang. Yeah. I, I got nothing for you, man. Looks cool. Too many images, maybe, and uh, the first image should be changed out for something that really makes you want to scroll more. Like this one? Sick. This one? This one right here? Sick. Yeah, Frank, you're right, totally. Game assets, they usually take these edges and they bevel them just a bit more than normal because they alias nicely. They look softer. They're easier to read. Anyways, really nice stuff. I would maybe look at, like, I, like, I want to see it in a game and see what it looks like in first person or, like, in a weapon screen. You know, dude, you should build in a, a, like a weapons table environment. That's for like modding your, your weapon. Oh man, that'd be sick. Okay. Let's, let's hop to the next one. Yo, look at this guy. Whoa. Dude, what? Boss fight, challenge, Egypt. Oh, yeah, Punisher. 
So they they already have. Did they already give you the animation and you just do the? Because often they already have the animation, right? You see the temple at the bottom? It's really cool, man. Unreal Engine as well. First time here, what's shaking? Dude, what's up? Full Crown King. Dude, that's a dope name. Welcome. So this looks pretty sick. Um, Readability-wise, it's kind of... It's like all the same temperature. In motion, it, it helps a lot, I think. And it's nice that like when the character is like exploding upwards, it's much bluer. Like there's... You're able to control the color a little bit more that way. Um... Nice. This is cool with the, like, you totally understand and can read what that is. That's some interesting water. So you did trim sheets and Omega scan material. Ooh, look at this. Edge wear, dust, AO dirt, grunge variation. Hell yeah. This is great to see because it helps you, it helps the viewer understand what you're doing. Some decent passive advice. Hell yeah, man. Dude, welcome. Enjoy your stay. Um, so there's a nice amount of detail happening in this shot. I think what I usually like to do, as people know, is just play with the, the camera raw filter to just explore temperature. Let's see what we got here. Because usually when you bring in other colors or like cooler colors in a, in a warm scene or generally warm scene, it helps a lot because there's certain things that are warm that'll maintain their warmth. So you get more color variation or, or variety for free almost. Um, and you can see the difference here. The atmosphere almost feels uh, cooler. I think if maybe if the fires were toned down a little bit, right now they're very like glowing bright. Like we were looking at that filter earlier, if we put this on here, those are super bright. And I think if we're looking at lighting directionality, the brightest thing should probably be what's being lit. Fires can get pretty bright, but maybe not that bright. Just make it Michael Bay. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's there. There's some lens flare action going on. But you can see, like, there's quite a bit of stuff going on here when you, when you change that temperature. And if you want, you can like that temperature shift, we can just mask out, right? We can like invert this and then just have the shift happen on the sides. And it just ends up helping you with the, the overall feeling. It's a little bit more dynamic. Trying to think if there's anything else that you could really point at that like is this is this blood here? Like this stuff here. Cause this this reads a little odd to me. And there's quite a bit of I guess there's quite a bit of contrast with it. Yeah, see there's blood down here, which is really good. Kind of feels like this guy turns around. You should see like just some bodies. <laughs> A group that uh, took the wrong turn.
What's in the room behind the boss? A lot more bodies. So <laughs> what's back there? But yeah, I don't have too much to say on this. It's quite well done. Textile density might be off a bit in the gateway. You might be right. You might be right. Yeah, it feels like maybe these could tile a little bit more, the surfaces. These areas back here feel a little bit blurry, but I think it's because the camera is really focused on this character. I'm wondering if like, how's, how's AI going to deal with this? Uh, where are we at here? Filters. There we go. Neural filters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. We got eight more pieces to go. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, but let's, let's see how many we get through. I just want to see this really fast. Hmm. That's weird. It thinks it's really far back there. Okay. Yeah, it's doff. That's yeah. Okay. Because when you see it in the uh, in the post, it's it's quite sharp. Yeah, it looks pretty sharp here too. Yeah, that pose. <laughs> nah, super cool, man. Okay. Let's uh let's crash through these. I heard that the presentation and textures were off, so I'd love to focus on them. Um, feedback about the design and anything else would be appreciated too. Oh, dude, super cool. Oh, this is super nice. Very stylized, but still like hyper real. Let's, um, let's copy this image. So right off the bat, I would say the background is too dark. So it's making everything like, see, there's, there's just not a lot of range. Like you don't want to blow it out. Of course. Um, let's run this. Let's see where we're at here. It's pretty balanced on the prop itself. Okay. So let's, let's just grab this. Oh, thanks. <laughs> oh no, so close. So if you took that and then we took this background, let's like blast this up a bit. So I like having some type of a gradient back there. I wonder if you were to take like let me think here. So if we took this, I always like doing this. So if you take this, just trying to think where you can place this. Do that up resing though. And then let's just like blur. Getting something like this would really help with uh, balancing it. Of course, uh, all your other information is going to have to like read through it. Like even this, you color dodge that, and maybe we go to the levels and we we push the the brightest points down, and you just get that in the back. Then all of a sudden, this this is popping out much more. Then you could maybe put a shadow behind it just to get it to. Let's see, drop shadow, something like this. Distance, let's blur that quite heavily. Maybe we just do this just to get it to boom, pop out. And now your backdrop's more interesting. The prop is, is popping a little bit more. We could also take that opportunity. Let's dupe the prop and then let's go and filter. Let's do a blur, Gaussian blur. Actually, we're going to make it, um, 
Where is it at here? What? What is happening? Color? No. Frame? Dude, where's a uh, convert to smart object? Okay, I'm going to do it to the folder. Okay, so we're doing that. That way we can do a Gaussian blur on this. And then the Gaussian blur will help move me here. It was near the bottom, six from the bottom, really? <laughs> How, I, what? Hang on. Oh my God, that's hilarious. Thanks guys. Um, Okay, so this is a smart object. We can go to a filter. Let's just Gaussian blur this and we'll do a screen and we can use this. Um, and then we can adjust the, the blur. And we can put a mask on it, invert the mask, and then just paint on those bright points and get those, get that bloom, that nice hit of bloom. Maybe this. Maybe this, and then we can take this and just really tone it down and then just bring it up just enough to get a nice glow. So then you're now you're pushing, you're pushing a bit more. The other thing I would say is maybe the text here. Let me see if I can select this text. Is it this one? Yeah, let me grab this, please work. And I just do that and then let's put a mask on here or a limit it. Maybe we'll put white and we'll just get a little bit of a gradient in there. Something like that. Like that's, that's feeling pretty cool. Maybe the, maybe the bloom is too much still. Just really tone it down. But yeah, this is, I think this is helps a bit with it because before, right? It just doesn't feel like it's popping out enough. Nice. <laughs> Cool. Anyways, pretty cool prop. Details really nice. Sculpting's really cool. I would love to ooh, animated. That's cool. Oh, this is nice too. It's like shape exploration. Oh, really nice. Wow, this is great. Oh, what? Okay, hang on. Oh, interesting. Okay, so from this view, like I'm expecting the lighting to look like this, just so you know. I mean, I guess can't you, yeah, you can rotate it. I would probably remove the effects just so that we can appreciate the, the asset in this view. Really cool. Very nice. This feels a bit dark. That could maybe be a lighter. Sick though, really sick. Okay, Caden, let's take a, let's take a peek. Uh, I've been working on this residential area. Would appreciate any feedback, especially on the composition. Um, what can I do to push it further? I haven't done a ton yet, lighting. So I think there's too many things here. Like it's a big scene and figuring out the logic of the road or the walkways is gonna be um, the hard part because this feels really empty in the middle. It almost feels like there should be like a tree here and then you don't really have to look at like all of the stuff in the whole scene. It's very big. But uh, let me see what, yeah, if I were you, I'd probably focus on just this courtyard here or the front entrance of this building. This is gonna take you months, I feel like anyways. Um, thinking about the, the floors feel really short and it's weird that there's these lines here these lines for the floors line up in a way where like, 
I guess this building is a different height from this building. Maybe there's stairs on the inside. But this is a really big scene. I would highly suggest scaling it back. You could focus on just this area right here, and it would already look, it would still look just as great, I think. Big workload. But yeah. Figuring out the logic of what this space is, like what is this area supposed to be, right? And why is, why are the sidewalks shaped the way they are, and what's why are they so tall from the road? I would just focus on this spot if I were you. Um, outside of that, it looks like you're thinking about scale, so that's good. Um, hmm. The other thing I would probably focus on is like just doing this real quick. Is you're doing this, this is great. Getting some other things like antenna dishes and stuff or just things that are happening up here just to break up the shapes is going to be really important, I think. Just because that whole top area is very simple right now. I think if you focus on this area, then you just have to worry about this. Yeah, and I don't really know. I don't know either, Frank. I don't know what setting this is in. I see you're using vertex paint for blending between materials. I probably control that a little bit more so it doesn't look so patchy everywhere. And think about like where it happens. Like it's usually going to be near the bottoms or like where where you have tension points. Um. Yeah. It'd be mainly around the windows as well, right? Because there's a tension point where they meet. Light direction also, right now there's no light dropping in here. It's all on this side over here. I would bring it high enough or lower some of the buildings on the side here just to get light in on this fountain. Because you have no like directional shadows to play with. There's no like direct light. That'll help a lot if you have that. Yeah, the sun maybe is not high enough or it's not casting in a, in a, good angle for like illuminating the space because what you're doing is you're building a very large open area that you're going to have to sit there trying to solve how to make it bigger the guy on the right's trying to escape dude he's like they won't see me back here just climbed out the window he's like against the wall but yeah i hope that uh hope that helps okay now it's, next we got uh oh bro bro it's done. Hey, I think I sent you this the other day on stream, but not when you were doing critique. So yeah, would love to get some overall feedback on it. I think I would maybe minimize the visibility of the AC units back here. They're so bright that they pop from the wall, so they, they make you look. They felt more integrated. I think that would be better. Otherwise, uh, got some nice prop breakdowns. This is great. It's like you were thinking of me. <laughs> Barnes, what's up? Hello. Yeah, this is pretty sick. Oh yeah, I love these two. Some great progress. The comp so when we look at the previous scene, not to compare it to this one, but look at the scale of the space and still the scope can be quite large. There can be a lot of things that you need to build to make the space feel lived in and full of things. Dude, I love that dude sitting in the back there. It took you seven months. Yeah, and you built like multiple scenes out of it, basically. Like this angle, this angle, this view. Maybe this overhead thing doesn't look grounded enough. Like if there's some like drip or connection that helped connect that would be good. Oh, okay. I can do, I can do one more. It looks like we got a few others. 
I think one, two, three. I know, Rig, you, you're like right on the edge there. Oh, this looks cool. So with this one, I think, so modeling wise looks pretty good. Maybe these are a little high poly. I don't know, that might be a little extreme to say that. But uh, what I would suggest doing is you need like a, a layer on top that kind of connects everything together. And that would really help like bring it all together. Cause right now it just kind of feels like materials that are like they're the same material, but they're not interacting with each other. So there's no like rust or dripping decal work or like grime or like where this meets the ground, some gradients on the surface, that type of, that type of stuff. Single, it's, it's great to uh, see you post some stuff, man. Really awesome. It's, it's nice to see who, the, who you are as well. So just think about gradients. Think about like uh, this upper area being maybe brighter and the bottom area maybe being brighter or darker based on like it meeting the ground and all of that information. Um, man, yeah, it just needs a little bit of like surface information to like explain this. This surface also is tiling or is very like, it feels lower res than it should maybe. Like this should probably be a tiling texture and this should be like a baked, these are baked, right? And this should be a tiling material um, with these details, these damage points baked in. But poly count wise, you could probably take something like this way further. You could, like with the the concrete areas, you could probably double or triple the poly count, and it would be still below the poly count of like your standard type of uh, asset like this. I'd also be curious to see how you would plan to use this piece in a kit if you were building like walls, what what that space would look like. This shows it really well in motion. I think if you had this and you moved the light around instead, that would probably display the surfaces a lot better. I would like to see your UVs though, and maybe like your texture maps, just to understand how you're doing stuff. We've got wireframes, so that's good. We probably only need one of these. This one can probably be your texture maps. But yeah, cool. Yeah, no problem. All right, so Claudio, I apologize I cannot get to you. Same with Rig and Snaps and uh, is it Jahid? You guys are you guys are probably chilling in the stream hearing me tell you this. <laughs> Sorry. It's fine. Dude, your piece looks pretty sick, man. We're gonna have to uh, put put your work in the critiques channel, please, if you haven't. Same with you, Snaps and uh, Jahid and Claudio. But don't worry, we'll do another one of these three weeks from now. It's gonna be another uh, another critique. Okay, I'm gonna. I gotta jump out of here. Got to have my evening. Got to, you know, drink my water. Oh, my gosh. Okay, you guys have a good evening, and I'll see you in the Discord. And if not, I'll see you on Sunday. It's been a pleasure. And welcome, all you new people. I see you. Lurking's fine. It's 3 a.m. Oh, my God, dude. Don't don't tell me these things. Have a good evening. Bye guys.